Hello and welcome to A Sense of Centerville and Washington Township, your place for stories about ordinary and extraordinary residents and places in the Centerville and Washington Township area. I'm Susan from Centerville, Washington History, and today my guest is Lisa Elam Tucker. Hi. Bill's Donuts was founded by Bill and Faye Elam in 1960, but the original shop was in downtown Dayton. In the 1970s, there were several locations throughout the Dayton area with stores in Vandalia, Wilmington, Kettering, and Huber Heights. In Centerville, the original shop location was closer to the intersection of Franklin and Main, but the parking was limited, necessitating a move to the current location at Brad Street and Far Hills. Originally, the shop wasn't open 24 hours a day, but as more Centerville residents were working third shift at NCR, the store evolved to uh, the shifting demand. In 1995, Bill and Faye sold the business to their children, Lisa and Jim. Lisa is my guest today. So it's great to have you here. I, you. I know that um, you know my family are are super fans of, of Bill's Donuts, especially the 24-hour mm -hmm. part of it. You know, as they're teenagers, then they want to, you know, stay up late and, and, right. and necessitating an, uh, a run to Bill's Donuts sometimes. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm, I'm curious about the history of the shop and your father and mother. And I shared a little bit about the history. Um, but the question I have is, why did they decide to open a donut shop? Okay. Well, they both came up here from Tennessee to okay. go to work, which a lot of people in this area are from Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, Dad drove a bread truck for White's Bakery, he and a man named Reed. And Reed had a cousin that had a donut shop in Indiana. So they went over went there one day to check it out and see what it was and how they prepared and everything. And on the way back, they both decided they'd go in partners together and open up a shop. And that was the first one. It was on North Main in Dayton. Um, and then they moved to East 3rd Street in Dayton. Um, and his name was Reed. Uh, they opened up together, and then later on, Reed went out on his own, and he had a shop in Fairborn, and Dad kept the one in Dayton. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so they came up um, for a better better for opportunities work. for work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, at that, so they went into business. Was your mom part of the the business at that point? Were they married then in Kentucky and came up to the? the yeah, they got married up here. Oh, they up knew here. each other in Tennessee. But her, my mom and her sister moved up here, and my dad moved up here, and they got together after they were in Ohio. Okay. Um, but at the time, dad would work third shift at the shop making everything, and mom worked. Um, she worked for Traveler's Insurance first, and then she went to Frisch's and did all of the payroll for Frisch's. So she would work there during the day, dad would work at night, and then they were both home in the afternoons with us. Wow. So... So it sounds like they, they were a great team. So your dad was the baker mm -hmm. end of it. Mm -hmm. So all of the recipes came from him. Yes, yes. And your mom did more of the payroll or did she yeah. bake as well? Well, she could bake as well, but she did all of the payroll and um, ordering and that kind of stuff. And then dad did most of the labor of it, but she was able to do either one. Right. So work, both working parents yes. at a time when, you know, a lot of people, um, somebody stayed at home right. with, the, with the children. Right. Um, so she, they, they managed to make it work. Yeah, they did that for the first two or three years. And then I came along in 62. So she was able then, um, they had a real good neighbor friends, an older couple that would take care of me while, till she got off work at five. And then she would be home with us or with me and then with my brothers later on. So growing up as part of the Bill's Donuts uh, community, did you have aunts and uncles uh, in this area at all? Or? Um, I had my mom's sister was here, her and her husband. Um, she didn't work, but my uncle drove a semi. Okay. So, but that was the only family we had up here, and then the rest of them were in Tennessee. And and still, you have family in that area in Tennessee. Uh -huh. um, yeah, my mom still has one sister left, and my dad had a sister and brother-in-law that had a donut shop in Cookville, Tennessee. Uh -huh. So the donuts are in your family. Yeah, he t they came up here and learned from dad, and then they went back down to Cookville and started their own. And it's still there in Cookville now. Wow. 
that's amazing. I, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, when we start this, I don't necessarily know where the, where the stories headed. where the story's going to go, but th- that's fascinating. Thank you so much. So tell me a little bit more about your parents. I, I'm just curious about the kind of people they were and what are the things that you remember most about them? Um, well, they were always hardworking. Um, we always, once everything got established, mom was always home with us during the day. When we got off school, she was there um, growing up. Uh, like, but I, like I said, they were very hardworking. Um, they treated people well. Um, I can remember they tell the story when they were on East Third Street. Dad had worked I don't know how many hours, and he said, you know, whoever was coming in to replace him, don't call me unless you get robbed. Well, sure enough, he got robbed that night. No. <laughs> but it was a man whose wife had passed away, and he had four or five little kids, and all he wanted was milk for his kids. So instead of mom and dad doing anything, they ended up buying groceries and taking them to the man, you know, that kind of thing. Um, But then throughout the course, they've done different things in the community. Some people know about it, some don't. Um, We're the founders of a special wish foundation in Dayton. Um, They granted the first wish. They saw a little boy on TV. Um, It was an Oakwood police officer, David Lance, that knew of this family, and they had a blur, just a tiny little blurb on there where uh, Brian Collins was the little boy's name, and he wanted to go to Disney. Well, Mom and Dad wrote the check for them to go to Disney. That was in 1983. And then from them forward, we've been part of the Special Wish Foundation. Each year we grant a wish and, and do stuff with them. Um, when his wish got granted, every year we have uh, Santa Claus at the shop before Christmas, and we hand out donut holes, and kids sit on his lap and everything. So they were able to bring Brian into the shop that day, and Santa granted his wish to go to Florida. And um, after the little boy got down and, and was sitting with his mom, he told his mom, he said, that's the real Santa. And his mom says, how do you know? And he said, because I saw him cry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got tons of stories like that, but... Mom and Dad were always very giving and, and helping out other people, and, and we're trying to carry that tradition on as well. Well, I know you are because there's always some collection happening <laughs> at Bill's Donuts, and you don't always know about them into, unless you're going in the shop regularly, right. but there's there's always that back room that has a pile of that things stuff. that they're co- collecting yeah. um, for something. And, and that's just, you know, that's what shows who your family is and what your business is about and caring about people and not just in our community, but, but throughout, throughout. Yeah. To, seeing beyond. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is really important. Do you have some favorite stories about your parents not related to the shop and their, and their business? Oh gosh. I wouldn't, wouldn't even think anything like well, that. Well, think about it okay. and maybe we can come back to that. Okay. Yeah. If something triggers a, okay. a, a memory. Um, so whenever I walk into the store, the, the first thing is you're walking in the back, all of those pictures okay. of all the different sports teams sponsored um, by, uh, by your business. So you're obviously a supporter of many organizations mm-hmm. and um why is being a part of the community so important to a small business such as, as Bill's Donuts? Well, being a small business, right now it's hard for people. Um, and the community has been so welcoming to us that we feel like we, it's necessary to give back. Um, the little kids, there's nothing better than watching them come in and see their picture on the wall. Um, and so we've done t-ball, baseball, football, we elks. Um, we try to, to spread it around with all the little kids. Um, it's just it's just important to give back to the people that have helped put you where you are um, and their business and it, it allows us to do the things that we do just strictly from their business coming in yeah and uh, sometimes they'll come in after an event mm-hmm. and so it just kind of feeds that it's just so interesting because not all small businesses recognize that no. as part of the business strategy yes that 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 being kind and generous can also help your business. So yeah, it comes back to It does come back. Yes, yeah. it does. And, and it just shows, you know, who you are as a person and who your, who your company Thank is. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So the community is so passionate about Bill's Donuts. Um, your company has been warded uh, and been listed in top-ranked donut shops, which is always <laughs> For a long so time. Amazing. People <laughs> always come and... And promote your business for you. It's just amazing. Um, 
So why do you think the pa- the the community is so passionate about Bill's Donuts? I don't. Well, we we tried to keep it all the same um, when we built the building in '79. We've not changed anything in the decor. Um, and it's funny because when we close, people say, you're not touching the built, you're not doing anything inside, are you? And we're like, no, no. Okay, well, we like it the way it is. <laughs> That's so, so funny. So it's all the paneling still there. Everything's still the way it was when Dad had it built. Um, but I think it's just... Like, we're always there to help someone. You know, if they need a drive, okay, I'll collect stuff for you. Um, It's just important to let people know that there's somebody there that can help. Everybody wants to help and to donate, but we like to be that focal point that's able to get your gift to where it needs to go. It's like a community center in a way. I know some people are there every day. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Cheers, except everybody's sober. That's true. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is. That that's that's definitely true. And it's a gathering place. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I think those gathering places are so important. And as we kind of have come off this um, this pandemic, where there has been less gathering, yeah, we realize how important gathering is. Yes. Um, so I'm sure that affected all small businesses. Um, anything you want to touch on there? Or? Well, it, it was just rough. I mean, because we're built for community, mm-hmm. I believe. I mean, we're supposed to be a community and rely on each other. And when COVID hit, it was just, it either brought out the worst in people or the very best in people. It was just, it, it was a really stressful, trying time for people. Um, we did the best that we could with what we had. Uh, but I'm just glad we're past that now and, and moving forward. People are coming yes, coming back and gathering. Yes. And, um, and the sad thing is we've lost a lot of them that we didn't know because of that time period. And that's sad to not realize that, you know, some of your customers have passed away or been gravely ill. And, and by not being allowed to come in and visit, then we lost out on a lot of that. Yeah, you don't, you don't know. No. Yeah, that, that's definitely part of it is that, because we were so separated, we weren't sharing our experiences. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing part of that history because I think talking about the pandemic is something that's sensitive to talk about, but also important to remember and yeah. record. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that experience. Um, no small business was unaffected. So. None. <clears throat> yeah. None. <laughs> and nonprofits as well. Oh, you know, yeah. That, that. Well, I think they got hit the hardest because people didn't have the money to help fund them as well. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people weren't working or if they were, they weren't sure for how long they'd be working. So I think the donation dollars really sh- kind of shriveled up these last 18, 24 months. Yeah, yeah, definitely with mm-hmm. with collecting as well. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it feels good to get back in doing those kind of things that benefit other people. And I think the the more we think about other people, um, the happier we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My next question talks a little bit about the superhero donut run, which oh. I actually didn't know a whole bunch about. Can oh, you really? share a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, it, that is another fundraiser for the Special Wish Foundation. Okay. And what we did, it was, um, we had a a kid's fun run, which was just around the track. And we had a 5K and a 10K. Um, People would pay to register. And then we encouraged everybody to wear superhero costumes. How fun. (laughs) It was. It was. The very first one we had at the shop. Okay. And we started at Bradstreet on Main there. Well, we didn't realize how many people were going to show up for that run. And we ended up blocking 48. I mean, the police were great. They had it all mapped out for us. and But it was overwhelming, the amount of people we had the first year. So after that, we moved it to Centerville High School. Um, and they've been really gracious with us, letting us use the track. So now the kids run like four laps around the track in their costumes. And then the rest take off for the 5K and the 10K. And you can run, you can walk, you can push a stroller um, there's medals at the end for everybody. Everybody got a T-shirt if they registered by a certain time. And then, of course, at the end, everybody got donuts. Which so, is a hit, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> so we've raised, oh gosh, I want to say close to 20000 with the last race. Um, COVID hit us kind of hard, but this last one, we finally came back and, and had a good year with that. And hopefully that will continue as well. So who does the organizing of it? Of the, the race? Yeah. Um, David Sire, that's the chairman of the, um, or the executive administrator of the, of the foundation. 
he has volunteers and they we have people that have volunteered for years with special wish so they come out and they put the signs up where to run and they may man the water stations or go get the fruit or um, he has a, a great resource of people for volunteers that help with that that's wonderful. Well, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Do you usually show up that day? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we hand out donuts that day, and sometimes we're in costume as well. Um, there's a group of adults that dress as the superheroes, um, like the Iron Man and Batman and all those. And they go to Children's Hospital pretty regularly, too, and, and cheer these kids on. But they always show up at that at that time with Wonder Woman, Batman, uh, Iron Man. I don't know all their names anymore. No, There's so I'm many not. of them, but they do pictures, and, and we've got a great photographer that takes pictures with the kids and the and the superheroes. So fun. Yeah, I know. And and who doesn't want to be a superhero? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And it and we've had some Wish kids mm-hmm. um, that have participated. Once they're well enough, they've right. been out to participate, and so it's been a really nice, good gesture. Oh, it's nice that you've had that partnership for all these years. Oh, yeah. Well, since, since 83. Since 83. Yeah. In fact, we're getting ready. We're going to be granting a wish um, in November for a little boy here in Centerville. Um, I don't have all the details yet, but you've been in the shop. We have a little yellow, like little yellow house that sits on our counter, and people drop their change off, and that all goes to special wish. Well, every year there's enough money dropped in that box to grant a wish. Which wow. could be anywhere between six and ten thousand dollars, depending on the wish. Right. Um, but we turn that money in regularly, and this year we'll be granting another wish in November. That's amazing. So it's really the community is yeah. contributing. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah. that's their their nickels, dimes, and quarters go to these kids, and they get to go to Disney or they. Um, the last wish we just granted um, was the the child wanted to pet a horse and see Belle. From Beauty and the Beast, and we pulled that off last week. Wow! Yeah, the the therapeutic riding center brought a horse down, and they were able to wheel her out so that she could pet a horse and um, and see Belle as well. I'm sure that those, those there was bring no you joy. dry eye. Yeah, yeah there was no dry eye. Definitely, yeah. yeah um, granting wishes. It's definitely um, a feel good moment. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the good thing about Special Wish, it all stays here local. Um, it's called A Special Wish Foundation, and we just deal with the seven counties right around Montgomery County. None of our money is, is national or like some of the others. You never know where it goes, but all of ours stay right here in the, in the Miami Valley. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, that, that is not a direction I thought we would go, oh, but I, well. <laughs> really, I really appreciate that. That's so great to hear. So going back to your business, Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the biggest challenges to owning a business, a small business, or specifically Bill's Donuts? Right now, it's the supply chain. Um, We get uh, three major deliveries a week. And right now, since since COVID has officially been over, so to speak, um, not one truck has 100% of what we order. It's been really challenging to try to find some of our ingredients um, and just basic supplies Paper bags, now there's a shortage. Um, They've been a shortage of our boxes. Uh, It's just been really hard to to navigate through that, to figure out who to order from where and how much. So that's our number one problem right now is just the supply chain alone. It's crazy because we think, you know, the pandemic brought these challenges and now new challenges. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it, doesn't seem to end that part no it's just and then the cost I mean everybody knows their groceries are going up and all of our prices are going up as well Mm -hmm. Um, what I used to pay $45 for a cube of shortening is now 80 I mean it's just really crazy the pricing that has has changed and the shortages that we're going through in just a short time Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's 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 our biggest concern right now is just supplies and to be able to to keep the quality because we just we don't just buy any you know we buy a certain type of of ingredient or product because that's how we've always done it and and it's hard to I don't want to change that it makes it sound (laughs) taste familiar because you change any ingredient then you can't you mess the recipe especially your shortening you can you can tell if we have to get a different shortening so that's the biggest thing so does that bring anxiety? Or oh, just a little. Just a little bit. Oh, my goodness. I would be a terrible business owner. 
Um, so, but let's talk about what are the best parts of owning a family business? Just all the people. Um, we, we've had baby showers, we've had uh, receptions, we've had wakes, we've had pig roast, um, we've had all kinds of celebrations out of the shop. And just getting to know the people that come in on a daily basis, it's, it's more like family. Um, and then as far as family owned, like my brothers and I, we grew up in the shop. You know, we used to joke that your kids have Play-Doh to play with and we played with real dough. You know, yeah. that was always one of the jokes. But um, it's just the people and the employees. I've got some employees that have, they are like family. Um, one girl's been there 35 years. I mean, she's like the sister I never had. Um, and so that that's one of the joys of having it is just. The, the camaraderie with a lot of the different people that come in or work for it with us. Building a sense of community. Yep. Yep. That's, yep. that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we're, you know, that's why I love this podcast to be able to kind of, you know, find out more about yeah. my community yeah. and yeah. where the, where the key players are in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so how about the future of Bill's Donuts? Where do you see the future? Well, hopefully we're still going strong. Um, Right now, as long as the supplies and everything will be fine. Um, I don't know down the road. Um, I don't have any children. My brother has a couple, but I'm not sure what their um, – one has four children and the other has one, so we're not really sure at this point what's going to happen and, and how it's going to play out at the end. Yeah, yeah. But um – you already said that no decor is going to change. No, <laughs> no that's been the number one thing. That's strange, but okay. Well, I think that's very comforting for people to have yeah, something that's familiar. Yeah, it when, is. When so much changes. Yeah, to have especially something. the last two years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, there's been occasional changes, but... but um, nothing major. Nothing major. <laughs> no. Um, and so my last question, this comes from my coworker. She wanted to know what your favorite donut is. Ah, I eat them all. <laughs> But my favorite is the cinnamon roll. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite. But I, I, I try to sample a lot of them. Yes, definitely. Quality control. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love, I mean, there's so many great ones. I, I do love the pretzel, but I'll go in and get some donut holes a oh, lot yeah. of times because they just pop in so easy. <laughs> you don't know how many you ate. <laughs> I know. It's, it's kind of unfortunate that way. <laughs> it's like, oh, well. Oh, yeah. well. <laughs> so how about Centerville? Let's talk a little bit about Centerville and mm -hmm. um, where are your favorite places outside of your business that, that you like to go to in Centerville? Um, well, I like to go to Double Days. I love to eat there at Double Days mm -hmm. and Archer's. Mm -hmm. um, we try to go to, again, privately, you know, family-owned restaurants. We do that. Um, my mom and I like to go over to Hannah's and take supplies and stuff over to Hannah's treasure chest. Oh, I love, I love yeah. Hannah's. Yeah, we're doing a um, sock and underwear drive right now for little kids till oh, the 15th. Good to know. So yeah. socks and underwear. <laughs> yep, socks and underwear till the 15th. I mean, I'll take them any time, but right, till yeah. the 15th. Um, but, yeah, we, we try to go to ma mainly just independent privately owned businesses mm -hmm. and do that small businesses small business supporting yep. small businesses yep yeah and we and we try to do that too uh you know especially in our um with uh Center of washington history you know supporting those other businesses that mm -hmm. are that are in in the area uh, in centerville well it's been so delightful meeting Thanks. you i feel like we're friends even <laughs> though we just met and um you know that's that's part of being a community is yeah. that we have some similarity there that, that we both love Bill's Donuts. Thank you. <laughs> you more than me. But, yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I really enjoy, um, you know, living that community. So okay. thanks so much thank for you. visiting oh, with no, us I'm today. Oh, no, I'm glad to do it. So thank you to MVCC for helping us produce this podcast and to my guest, Lisa Elam Tucker. Um, if you have an interesting story about Centerville or Washington Township, please call Centerville Washington History. Please also come visit our museums in Uptown Centerville, Tuesday through Friday, 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and watch for upcoming events at centervillewashingtonhistory.org. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.